हेलो गाइज कंटिन्यूंग विद द सीरीज ऑफ क्लास नाइन्थ एन सी आर टी सोल्यूशन दिस टाइम आई एम बैक विद सॉल्ड एक्सरसाइज ऑफ चैप्टर थ्री ऑफ जोग्राफी विच इज ड्रेनेज नो इट इज नॉट द ड्रेनेज दैट यू माइट बी थिंकिंग ऑफ इन जोग्राफी इट रेफर्स टू द रिवर सिस्टम ऑफ एन एरिया ऑल ओवर इंडिया दे आर इनॉर्मस रिवर्स एंड देर ट्रिब्यूटरीज विच आर फ्लोइंग इन मेनी पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री whether it be ganga indus brahmaputra yamuna ling satluj kaveri along with around 400 plus rivers so without taking more of a time let's solve the question and answers with megha goel for the first question we have to choose the right answer from the four alternatives given below one can see the alternatives on the screen and i will tell you the right answer number 1 in which of the following states is the vular lake located Answer is Jammu and Kashmir. Answer two, the river Narmada has its source at. Answer is Amar Kantak. Third, which of the following lakes is a salt water lake? Answer to this is Sambhal Lake. Fourth, which of the following is the longest river of peninsular India? Answer to this is Godavari. Fifth. Which one amongst the following rivers flow through a rift valley? Answer to this is Tapi River. Now let's discuss the second question which says answer the following question briefly. One is what is meant by a water divide given example. Any elevated area such as mountain or an upland which is separated two drainage basins is known as a water divide. Ambala is located on a water divide between the Indus and the Ganga river system. Second is which is the largest river basin in India? Answer to this is Ganga which is over 2500 km long forms the largest river basin in India. Question 3 Where do the river Indus and Ganga have their origin? Answer Indus and Ganga both of them have their origin in the Himalayas. The river Indus rises near the Mansarovar lake in Tibet and Ganga originates at the Gangotri glacier in the Himalayas. Fourth, name the two head streams of Ganga and where do they meet to form the Ganga? Answer is the two head streams of the Ganga are Bhagirathi and Alaknanda and they meet to form the Ganga at Devaprayag in Uttarakhand. Fifth, Why does the Brahmaputra in its Tibetan part have less silt despite a longer course? Answer to this is the Brahmaputra river in its Tibetan part have less silt because of its cold and a dry area. 6th which two peninsular rivers flow through trough? Answer the Narmada and the Tapi are the two long rivers which flow through trough. Next is state some economic benefits of river and lakes some of the economic benefits are number 1 river provides water for irrigation and domestic purpose as well and lake helps in regulating the flow of a river number 2 rivers carry silt and sediment which makes the land fertile and lakes prevent flooding during heavy rainfall number 3 Rivers are helpful in providing means of transport and inland waterways. Number 4, lakes helps in maintaining the aquatic ecosystem. The next question, question 3. In this, we have to group the given lakes under two categories, natural and created by human beings. So I will tell you the natural first and then the human being. I will first tell you the uh, lakes which comes under the natural lakes. The lakes are Volar दाल लॉकटक चिल्का भारापनी सांभर पुलिकट एंड नैनीताल एंड भीमताल सेकेंड लेक्स क्रिएटेड बाय ह्यूमन बींग्स दीज आर गोविंद सागर नागर अर्जुना सागर हीरा कुंड निजम सागर एंड राणा प्रताप सागर मूविंग टू क्वेश्चन फोर इट इज डिस्कस द सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द हिमालयन एंड द पेनिसुलर रिवर Firstly I will tell you about the Himalayan river and then to the peninsula. Himalayan rivers are the rivers that originate from Himalayan ranges and flow throughout the year. Second, it is perennial in nature and forms delta. Third, bed rocks are soft, sedimentary and easily erodible. And fourth, it has large drainage system and forms a V-shaped valley. 
coming to the peninsula number 1 Peninsular rivers include those rivers that arises from western ghats and receive water only a particular period of time. Number two, it is known perennial in nature and some rivers form delta while others form ashery. Third, bed rocks are hard, sedimentary and are not easily erodible. Fourth, it has a small drainage system and forms a U-shaped valley. Our next question, question 5, it is compare the east flowing and the west flowing rivers of the peninsular plateau. Okay, the key points for the east flowing rivers of peninsular India are first, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri are the major east flowing rivers. Secondly, these rivers drain into Bay of Bengal. Since these rivers carry a greater amount of sediment, they form deltas at their mouth. And fourth, these rivers have many tributaries. Coming to the west flowing rivers of peninsular plateau, number one, Narmada and Tapi are the two main west flowing rivers. Second, these rivers drain into the Arabian Sea. Number third, they form ashuries at their mouth as they carry less sediment. And number fourth, these rivers have comparatively less number of tributaries. Okay, with this, we have completed our chapter 3 unsolved question. I hope answers are provided in a pretty much simpler way. And if you like the video, hit the like button and keep subscribing to our channel for more such videos. Thank you.